I got uh, one more immaculate break I was in, and a care package, I guess, that came in today from Mr. Fisher Bike. Right down there, Mr. Fisher Bike. Boop. So, appreciate that, man. I have no idea what's in that one, so we'll get to the uh, break one first. First off, I said I was talking a little football in this vitro. I'm going to do my annual, because it seems like once a year, I feel like I have to do this rant. Of fans who blame the officials for losses. They drive me nuts. Any Lions fan out there, now I'm picking on the Lions fan this week, but this goes for any fan. We're using the Lions as the new example. Because I work with one who tried to say, oh, officials cost us that game. I wanted to punch him in the face. First off, you're up 20 to nothing. I don't think any more needs to be said after that, really. But if we really want to get into it after that, oh, I know. How about you hit Calvin Johnson wide open for the end, in the end zone? How about you learn how to pick up the same Dom Capers blitz he's been using for 30 years. Last three quarters, they, like, couldn't figure it out. It was, like, mind-blowing. Like, I've never seen this blitz before. He's been running the same blitz for 30 years. Oh, that was driving me nuts, too. So, yeah. And how about you not fumble and give him a quick touchdown? You know, there's so many plays in a game, and the game wasn't that horribly officiated throughout. You know, pretty, I would say pretty even. And the last play call of the face mask, in live time it looked like a face mask. That's not even in the top 50 of atrocious calls I've seen this year. So everyone, like, outraged by that. Oh, the officials cost us a game. No, how about you learn how to defend a 60-yard Hail Mary and learn how to keep a 20 to nothing lead. The officials didn't cost you crap. Ugh. I don't even remember the last game I saw where the officials actually caused a team to lose. Yeah, there might be in a play in a game where you're like, man, that was kind of one of the plays that was important. Sure. Perfect example, Ravens-Dolphins. Somehow we won that game. I'll give you a perfect example. The Ravens got screwed over. Their first drive, it's the second drive of the game, the Ravens' first drive. Throw a deep touchdown pass to some white dude, I don't remember what his name was. Gets called for pushing off. And live time, I could tell the guy just slipped because it was raining all week. Feel very slippery. Guy didn't even touch him. They call him for a push off. Touchdown gets called back. That's a big play. Did it cost them the game? No. You know why? Because they got stuffed with inside the five-yard line. They threw a pick <laughs> for a touchdown. They had multiple opportunities to score, couldn't do it. They missed a field goal. It, oh, yeah, that one official's call cost you the game. <laughs> That's like a Ravens fan saying that to about the Dolphins game. You had so many chances to win that game. The officials didn't cost you anything. It was one of 20 main plays in a game that went against you. All right? Uh, so that's my annual rant. I hate people who are like, oh, the officials cost us the game. Unless the official was literally against your team from quarter one to quarter four, which happens maybe in one game a year, I don't want to hear it. Okay? That's my annual rant. It was outraged. I was about to punch the guy in the face at work. I was like, don't even, I don't even want to hear it. I was like, you know I don't want to hear it. I've been working with this guy for ten years. So, yeah, he didn't say much after that because he knew I was right. So, yeah, Dolph, like I said, Dolphins won with the whopping 86 passing yards by Ryan Tannehill. He got hit, I'd say, about, what, 65, 70% of dropbacks he probably got hit. So, yeah, it did. It's ugly. Our team just ain't clicking, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not even, what can you say? The Ravens just screwed it up more than we did. That's really all it is to it. But hey, we get to play the Giants. We get to play a little spoiler action over the next few weeks. We play Giants. Char the Chargers, isn't it? Giants, Chargers. I know the Pats is one. What's the other team? 
It's another team, like, fighting for playoff spot. I'm drawing a blank. Hmm. But we get to play some spoilers, so I'm sure a lot of people will be rooting for us against the Giants. Uh, Redskins, Cowboys, snooze fest up until the last two minutes. 17 points were scored, and bam! Cowboys get a victory within one game at 4-8. and eight. Uh, there's always one division a year. It seems like bad, and I guess it was the NFC East turn. Yikes. Seahawks got their mojo back, it seems like, the last two weeks. Where's this offense came from? You got Thomas Rawls. You got Russell Wilson. Just He was playing very average to start the year. He's, he's lighting it up. Doug Baldwin has become a number one wide receiver the last few weeks. Freaking Seahawks. Watch out. And what happened to the Vikes is what I said in the last video. What if the team, you know, keeps in check Adrian Peterson, and what if your defense is just average? Can Teddy Bridgewater win the game for you? I think that was answered. But uh, here we go. The guy haunted me and Immaculate in a good way. Number 38 of 99, Brett Favre. Like I said, this was just a random team break. I didn't buy the Packers in this one with Mr. P. Fudd. And I told you I had its little brother from the last video coming. This is number 9 of 10. Premium patch autograph, two color. Yep, Mr. Brett Favre, patch autograph. I can't freaking believe it. I don't know what's going on. Funny thing is, I haven't seen one of these premium patch autographs on eBay yet. I've owned two of the 16, you know, the versions, so I guess. But... Yeah. So there's the 2 of 10. There's its little brother. Still beautiful card. That's what normally you would see from a Packers patch. One of the guys in the last video, uh, who was it, thought maybe it was the 75th anniversary patch in the last one. Could have been. So, new Brett Favre, gorgeous card. Nice auto again. So, yeah, pretty psyched to hit that. I was surprised at that one. So, shout out to P. Fudd for that one. Um, and now into Mr. Fisher Bikes package. Let's see, what other games went on last week? Um, what did we have? Bills, Texans. That was kind of, you know, yeah. Bills got a needed victory. Sammy Watkins. He's another guy stepping up to the plate lately. Bam. So, oh, we got a little Christmas wrapping here. What's the which one? Okay, last, first. This is neat. All right. Let's see. Brad, Mr. Dolphin, I can't thank you enough for the poppy auto. It sits on my PC shelf. In return, I wanted to send you a Christmas package. I hope you don't have them. Merry Christmas, bro. Your pal, Jason. Well, I appreciate that, sir. I'm just glad. I knew you liked that guy, so when I saw that card, I thought I'm going to go after that for him. So I'm glad you liked it, man. So let's see what Jason has done. You know what one depressing thing is, though, the last month? Brent Grimes has forgot how to cover people. Everybody loves Brent Grimes. I loved Brent Grimes. He was awesome for us the first couple years. The last month or so, he's been getting burnt. He looks like garbage, so I don't know if he's hurt, if it's just he's just having an off year, because sometimes that happens, or if it's just the team kind of stinks and he just doesn't, ain't feeling it. I'm not sure which one it is, but he looks like a backup corner. He really does, and I don't know what his problem is. So hopefully he snaps out of that, because if he doesn't bring his A game on Monday night, uh, yeah. Could be a 200-yard receiving day for Mr. Beckham. So hopefully, Brent Grimes gets his head out of his rear and starts playing like I know he can. All right, here we go. Nice little stack. I don't know what happened to this guy. Mr. Jasper Collins. Not sure what happened to him. So we got a few rookies. Mike Gillisley, who just was playing in a game the other day. Dang, who was he playing with? 
Oh, I forget. But he got picked up by someone. Deion Sims, rookie. Oop, Jarvis Landry. I don't have that one. I know for sure I don't have that rookie card. Had a Bowman Chrome. Nice. Had his worst game as a pro last week. Not really his fault, but just, again, when you throw for 86 yards. Not a whole lot could be done. But I look for him to have a bounce back week with him and his buddy facing off together. Let's see, what is this? Old school. Oh, Larry Little Jersey from Crown Royale. 2010 Crown. Don't have that. 299. Big Larry Little. I'm sure a lot of these 72 Dolphins are watching the Panthers very closely. I actually picked the Saints in my pick and poll. Man, I was looking like a genius to start that game. Everyone's like, my dad was like, really? You took the Saints? And I looked like a genius, but they just kept giving up. They keep letting them, like, 50-yard touchdowns. Ted Ginn dropped, like, three of them. That's another game we got to talk about. Cam Newton's balling, by the way. But, man, they even missed so many plays. They could have scored 60 points. But the Saints were hanging in there. This is a guy I actually thought had good talent. He's still on the roster, but not always active. But I'm interested to see what he does next season. Matt Hazel tie-dye. This is a nice-looking card. From last year's Prism, 2014 Prism. This is actually a very nice card. Matt Hazel tie-dye. I really like that. Very nice. I don't have any tie-dye autographs. So this is a guy, I think next season, we might see him on the roster every week. Because I imagine we'll release Greg Jennings... And uh, Rashad Matthews, for, I hope we re sign but he's going to be a free agent. So I think he's going to be on the roster next year. Um, at a gold standard base, I wish they'd bring back gold standard. Now they just kind of mix it in with other stuff. Number 299, another 72 Dolphin member, Bob Greasy. Sweet. And then number 299. Boss Hog, Mike Gillisley. It's a nice little start there. Now we have one that says last. Boom. Like a kid on Christmas. Let's see. I don't want to see it. So I'm see which way it goes. Okay. I'll show you. Okay, that looks like Absolute. Maybe 2011 Absolute? Spectrum. Uh-oh. Oh, nice. Of Danny Thomas. Actually had a few solid years with us. He really did. It's just normally running backs, they're out of the league in four or five years. But he actually was very solid. Daniel Thomas autograph. That's probably low numbered being Spectrum like that. Yep, 9 of 10. Definitely don't have that. Is it 2011 or 2012? Or 2012 Absolute. Second year, 9 of 10, Danny Thomas. Very nice. So... Jason, really appreciate it, bud. I know Dolphins is your PC, too, so you definitely didn't have to do that at all. But it's much appreciated. If you guys don't know Mr. Fisher Bike, have his link below. I know he's working on a Cooperstown Hall of Fame set or whatever. I know he's Boston Red Sox, Miami Dolphins, Tampa Bay Bucks, Tampa Bay Rays. Hit him up. That's all I got. Until next time, go Dolphins.